Hello everyone, this is Adip. Welcome to my channel Movement Science where I simplify biomechanics with Joe. In today's video, we are going to talk about the radio ulna joint complex and we will be mostly talking about the structure and the articulation of the joint. So let's get started. So today we are going to talk about the proximal and the distal, both radio ulna joints and we will see what articulation occurs at this joint, okay? So let's get into the topic. So first, if we have a look at the radio ulna joint, that is the proximal or you can also call it superior radio ulna joint, the articulation of your radio ulna joint occurs between the radius and the ulna and this annular ligament which goes around it. So the radius is accepted by your ulna by the ulnar radial notch okay and the opposite thing will happen at the distal that is radial ulnar notch will be present so the ulnar radial notch is concave as you can see over here the radial head is convex right so to accept it we need a concave articulating surface it has also articular cartilage so that there is articulation happening between the radial head which also has articular cartilage around it and then the ulnar notch along with help of the annular ligament forms this osteoligamentous enclosure. So this enclosure, if you can see over here, this is the annular ligament and the bony part. So the osteoligamentous enclosure and this is surrounding the radius. So now let's move on to the annular ligament. Again, as we know, it goes around the notch and holds the radial head in place. And it is again lined with the articular cartilage because the radial head articulates with the whole section over here and we will talk about it in a bit in this part. So this is where the articulation happens and the ligament also has mechanoreceptors. Now these mechanoreceptors are evenly distributed and they will tell the position of your ligament and the joint over here to your brain so that it gets the proprioception. So that is how the articulation happens. Now let's move on to the third component that is the radial head. So the radial head during supination and pronation, the head of the radius spins inside this osteoligamentous enclosure formed by your other two components that is the annular ligament and the ulnar radial notch, right? And the radius will also spin around the capitulum. The humerus comes from the top, right? Like this. And the capitulum of the humerus will be present somewhere over here. We have seen it in the elbow joint. You can go check out the articulation over there and you'll know exactly where the capitulum is present. And the radius as it rotates or spins in this osteoligamentous enclosure, it also rotates over that capitulum. So that is the movement that is present in your radio ulnar, proximal radio ulnar joint of supination and pronation where the radius moves inside the osteoligamentous enclosure formed by your ulna and the annular ligament. So now that we have understood the proximal radio ulna joint, let's move on to the distal one. So talking about the distal radio ulna joint, the very important feature over here is your articular disc, which is biconcave. That means when it articulates or when it encounters your radius and ulna, it is concave on this side and on the other side it articulates with all the carpal bones, right? So it is concave even on the other side. So that is the disc over here, you can see. And this disc has a kind of triangular shape, that's why it's called as triangular and it is fibrocartilage in structure, so triangular fibrocartilage and it is attached to a lot of ligaments in the surrounding area. That's why it's called as the triangular fibrocartilage complex, okay? So that's the name of your articular disc. Now, this disc has a typical structure and it is attached to certain regions. So that's what we are going to explore in this part. And then we'll see what is the composition of the disc in this area, okay? So starting with our structure, you can see the triangle formed over here, right? So that's why the triangular fibrocartilage and it is placed somewhere around this area. So majorly it is present above the ulna and slightly you can say above the radius. So now this is the superior view as you can see. And if you can look at this triangle, it has a base and an apex, right? So the apex of your triangular fibrocartilage complex articulates with fovea 
and the base of the ulnar styloid process so you can see the ulnar styloid process and somewhere around that part there is something called as a fovea and the base of the ulnar styloid process that's where the apex is attached of the disc and the base of the disc is attached to the concave part over here of the radius that is basically your ulnar notch right as i mentioned in the previous slide there was a radial notch of ulna so over here there is ulnar notch of radius so that's where your base attaches the distal edge of the ulnar notch okay over here so that is the major attachment apart from that there are ligaments that are attached to this tfcc so on the medial side that is you can also say on the ulnar side it is attached to your ulnar collateral ligament and on the radial side it is also attached to some other ligaments and over here it is attached more firmly in comparison to your medial side so i mentioned that here medial side they are less firmly attached to your ulnar collateral ligament whereas the ligaments are firmly attached on the radial side as you can see it has a more area to attach because of the base right compared to your apex which doesn't have that much surface area you can say so that is your attachment of your articular disc or your tfcc now if you look at its composition it is high in collagen and it is sparse in elastin meaning elastin is very less but it is evenly distributed throughout your disc and this disc has a typical feature where it is thicker on the margins and centrally it's very transparent or you can say perforated and this perforation increases with age an interesting thing about this is it also correlates with its vascularity that means at the margin it's 3 to 6 mm thick and it is just 20% avascular meaning 80% of the margin gets a good blood supply and if you compare that to the central area of your tfcc that is somewhere over here there is 80% of avascularity and around 20% of the central area gets a good blood supply so basically centrally it's kind of avascular and it has good blood supply on the margins and it is also thick on the margins right so these are the major points we have for articular disc under your distal or inferior radio ulna joint now let's have a look at the articulation that happens at the distal radio ulna joint and the movement that happens so coming to our final slide where we will understand the articulation that happens over here and the movement that happens okay so first the articulation you can see the ulna which is convex okay the convex head of the ulna which is surrounded by your articular cartilage articulates with a concave part of the radius that is basically ulnar notch of the radius exactly opposite of what we saw in the proximal radio ulnar joint right so that's what i mentioned here the ulnar notch of the radius is concave and very high in curvature you can see it it has bigger curvature compared to your ulna and the convex ulna head articulates with this ulnar notch correct now ulna has two specific parts with which it articulates one with the disc and one with the radius so the convex u shaped pole which is there on ulna faces your disc whereas the convex seat which is present on the ulna faces your ulna notch so those are the two articulating parts that ulna has which faces your disc and your ulna notch right so that's how the articulation happens now what about the movement what did we see in the proximal radio ulna joint that ulna along with annular ligament was forming osteoligamentous enclosure around which the radius was moving but over here something different happens at the distal or the inferior radio ulna joint the radius is moving around the ulna so we will have a look at that over here in this part but before that we'll go through few more points just to understand the movement okay so first thing i need you to understand is the proximal and the distal radio ulna joints are mechanically linked meaning when there is supination or pronation happening the movement is happening simultaneously at both the joints right so as the radius is moving proximally the radius will also move distally over here like this and vice versa <clears throat> so that's the first point second the distal radio ulna joint is also mechanically linked to your wrist joint because there is disc and compressive forces right the transmission of compressive loads that happens through your wrist and radio ulna joints so these are the two things that you need to keep in mind so now with that in mind let's have a look at the movement that happens over here 
so at the distal radio ulnar joint simply put the concave surface of the radius slides around the ulnar head so the concave surface of the radius will slide around the ulnar head like this in this direction with supination and pronation and that's what the movement will look like and it was seen that in neutral position of your wrist there is optimal contact that is achieved between your ulna and the radius in extremes of supination and pronation the contact which is achieved between radius and ulna will be either on more on the palmar or the dorsal side but in neutral position it's evenly distributed so that's all we have for the proximal and distal radio ulna joint now let's quickly summarize the topic so first we saw how the annular ligament along with the ulnar radial notch forms this osteoligamentous enclosure inside which the radius spins right and it also spins on the capitulum of the humerus then we came to the articular disc of the distal radio ulnar joint where we saw its different attachments and we also saw how it is thick on the margins and thin centrally with not good vascularity in the center if you compare it to the margins where it has around 80% of vascularity from there we moved on to our distal or inferior radio ulnar joint articulation we saw how we saw how ulnar notch of radius moves around the ulna in this articulation and how your proximal and distal radio ulnar joints are mechanically linked and not forgetting how the distal radio ulnar joint and the wrist is also mechanically linked especially in transmission of the compressive loads that might happen through the disc so with that we finish off this topic in next video we will talk about the ligaments that are present around the radio ulnar joint so stay tuned for that and thank you for watching